Well, meditate, you're doing something good for your mind, giving it some time to be by itself and to look after itself. We spend so much time having to look after things in the world that the mind gets neglected. Our moods go up and down in line with the things in the world. And we forget that those things are not important because you can't take them with you. What you can take are the qualities of your mind, and those you can develop. The question is which direction are you developing them in? The Buddha recommends that you develop them in the direction of more mindfulness, more concentration, more discernment, qualities that really will help you. If you want to succeed in that work, then you have to commit yourself to doing the meditation and reflect on what you're doing. What does it mean to commit? Well, one, you have to have the desire to really want to do it well. And then two, you just stick with it. You see anything unskillful coming up in the mind, you let it go. As for the things you want to develop, you take care of them. As the mind begins to settle down and gets more still, you protect that stillness. Don't let it go away. This means you have to be really intent on what you're doing. This is why when we meditate, to begin with, we sit with our eyes closed, so you can focus totally on what's going on in the mind and with the breath and the body. And then as you get good at this, then you can open your eyes, walk around, and still stay with the breath. Still keep watch over the mind. You may not be able to give it your full attention at times like that, but always make sure that at least part of your mind is staying with the breath. You're giving some attention to this so that the mind has a good grounding. As for reflection, in Pali they use the word vimangsa, which the John Lee translates in the Thai word that means circumspection. You look at things from all sides, you look at things from all angles to make sure that what you're doing really is good. It's not just a matter of obeying instructions, because sometimes you may have misunderstood the instructions. Sometimes the instructions may be wrong. So you have to focus attention on taking in the instructions and then doing them and then gauging the results, what kind of results you're getting. And can you figure out some way of getting better results? That's how the meditation becomes your own, as you're looking after your own well-being and you're taking responsibility for it. In this way, the treasures of the mind, the good qualities of the mind, do get a chance to develop. And they don't just get thrown away. When the Buddha says discernment is discernment into arising and passing away, it doesn't mean that you let bad things arise or you let good things pass away. You understand how things arise, how things pass away, so you can encourage the good ones and discourage the bad ones. That's when you're truly wise, and that's when your wisdom can protect you. As we go through this world, there are a lot of people, a lot of ideas that can pull us in all sorts of directions. And it's good to have a clear compass that always points north, so we know what's right and what's wrong, what matters to us and what doesn't matter to us. The affairs of the world, as I said, are things you're going to have to let go of someday anyhow. You look after them in line with your, your responsibilities. But your main responsibility and your main concern should be the state of your heart and mind. So look after that as best you can. Commit yourself into developing it. Reflect again and again on things, how things are going and make adjustments. This is called success by approximation. You move toward better and better and better ways of looking after yourself, taking care of yourself. And in doing so, you're a better pres person in the world as well, more stable, more balanced. So it's good all around that you meditate.